Hello and welcome to the Flix Forum Podcast, where each episode we go back and we look at a Netflix original film in the order of release. This episode we have Netflix 255th film from 2020. It's the psychological thriller Fatal Affair. It's directed by Peter Sullivan and stars Nia Long, Omar Epps, Stephen Bishop and KJ Smith. I'm Jesse. I'm here solo hope you are looking forward to this episode if you wanted to check out the film called fatal affair give us a pause and come back later on because i will spoil parts of it at various stages in this chat we do kick our show off with the fast flicks where we do a quick little summary of what the film is all about and this one is it's a woman who is reacquainted with an old friend but he's after more than just friendship Ooh, intriguing hopefully that intrigues you uh, let's let's work out let's have a chat about how this ended up on netflix what can we find out about the film for this one, uh, we go back to October of 2019, where Deadline reported that Netflix had partnered with Hybrid Films, with Peter Sullivan directing the project. Nia Long, Omar Epps, and Stephen Bishop were attached to star in the film, with Sullivan and Rashid Garner writing the script. Um, Long, Barry Barnholtz, Brian Nolan, and Jeffrey Schnoke would serve as producers in the film. And then we go the next month in November of 2019, it was announced that KJ Smith had joined the cast as well. Principal photography kicked off in and around LA in 2019 um, in bits and pieces of California as well I think in Malibu as well um, a lot of the interiors too this one around the world uh, in Spanish French Chinese and Portuguese it's called Fatal Encounter in Greek it's called Fatal Bond in Hungarian it's called The Deadly Relationship in Italian The Dangerous Relationship in Japanese it's called Temptation is the Scent of Death oh I like that <laughs> Polish it's called Fatal Romance Romanian Romanian, it's called Fatal Escape. Russian, it's called Dangerous Connection. I like all of these titles better than the English title because, um, this is a spoiler, but our main character, as we'll talk about soon, doesn't actually have an affair in this film. So there's no fatal affair actually happening. Uh, interesting title for the English uh, in English language, I guess. I, I like all the other titles so much better. Uh, when this was released on Netflix of the 15th of July, 2020, it was the top stream film on Netflix in its debut weekend and then placed six the following weekend. So it sort of fell off a cliff from there. Uh, it, it was put on the reframe stamp list of best narrative or animated features for 2021. Uh, we've mentioned that a bit on this show. I think that that list doesn't hold any credit whatsoever. Um, I'm probably giving away my thoughts a little bit too early on this one, but let's look at what critics and audiences are saying about this film. On Rotten Tomatoes, it sits at 18%. That's on 38 reviews. So definitely rotten there. Audience even lower at 16%. That's on more than 100 ratings. IMDb, since a 4.6 out of 10, so fairly low. That's on four and a bit over 4,500 ratings. Letterboxd, low, low, low. It sits at a 1.9 out of 5 on nearly 5,000 ratings. Been logged by about 6,500 there. And then Metacritic, we've got our first Metacritic scores for a film that we've been looking at um, that we've since we've introduced this, where they're, they're both red. The critics have got it on a 34. That's on 10 critic reviews, so that 34 is out of 100. The audience has it at a 2.8 out of 10 on 11 reviews, and that is in the red as well. So negative, negative, negative. What are my thoughts, <laughs> my early thoughts for this one? Um, I guess this is, the easiest way to put this would be, this is Netflix's next Lifetime slash Hallmark style movie. Uh, the type of film that, that follows cliches, poor dialogue, crappy lighting, unrealistic situations. Uh, I think this is a film that you should probably skip if I'm, if I'm being honest. Uh, let's talk about some characters. So Ali, she's our, our main protagonist. Uh, she works at a law firm. Um, her and her husband, they're sort of empty nesters now. Their, their daughter's heading off to college, so they want a fresh start. They buy this big new house by the beach. Uh, she wants to start her own um, law firm. And then she sort of comes across this guy, David, who's an old friend, sort of tempts her a bit, but she stops anything before it becomes too serious because she understands that even if she does have issues with her husband and her marriage, she wants to work through them because she knows she's got it good. And, and some of those issues, her husband, Marcus, I guess, is that, you know, he's been injured. Uh, he was riding a, a bike, I think, and got hit by a truck possibly. Um, does architecture, but he's on some pretty heavy meds at the moment. Got scars on his body, he's struggling for, you know, from recovering from this accident. Uh, but generally, he seems like a pretty good bloke. Uh, I mentioned their daughter, Brittany. She's off to college. Uh, she's come back to stay with them over the break. She's got a boyfriend. Um, and, and the other character we need to talk about, I guess, is David, who's this... Uh, this interest that comes along is, is a stalker, really. That's all. <laughs> he's, a, he's, a, he's a super hacker, apparently, too. Good at IT, bit nerdy, 
completely obsessed with Ellie and has been since their college days. Apparently, uh, he's got he's, we find out he's got anger management issues. Uh, he has an ex-wife who apparently looked like Ellie too, uh, and this ex-wife died in suspicious circumstances. So just this creep and all these sort of things that you want to see in a psychological thriller, I guess. Uh, the other character, Courtney, is, is Ellie's best friend. Uh, you know, we see that she wants to go out for drinks with Ellie and, and these types of things. They're supporting her at work, but <laughs> just completely unstable character who um, ends up falling for David, even though he's with her to get with Ellie and, and her outburst at Ellie is just something a friend wouldn't do. So really, really poor character, Courtney. The director, Peter Sullivan. Let, let's chat about him. Uh, we, have, we have seen him before on our show. He has produced and directed that Netflix bomb, uh, Secret Obsession, which I was... The girl from Sweet Life and Zach and Cody, Brenda Song. Brenda Song, I think, from the top of my head. Uh, that was an absolute bomb. We covered that film. He mainly does TV movies, so he's got 163 producer credits, 113 writer credits, and 39 directing credits. I did find this nice little fact about him, though. Like um, Sullivan, the director, he was diagnosed with a severe hearing loss as a child, and with the assistance of hearing aids, he, he speaks and Ripley, sorry, read lips um, fluently or lip reads fluently. Uh, and, and he's expressed his personal challenges and journey with his work. So I think that's a nice little story. I'm, you know, I'm sure he's made a lot of money from the hundred plus movies he's been involved with, and I'm, I'm happy for him. I think that's nice. Nice little story. Uh, let's talk about some scenes. Scenes in this film that I liked, and then some things that I didn't like. So start. I think that there are some moments between Ali and Marcus, husband and wife, when it's revealed what's happening between Ali and David, and I think they'll played out nicely. The performances were okay there. They spoke about not wanting to hurt each other and, and their love and their daughter. And and I think um, Marcus mentions like, you know, he, he can't say that he's not angry or hurt because he's always gonna need her. And in those moments, they were okay. That was sort of okay, but the rest were all pretty ordinary. Uh, we'll start off with uh, when we first meet David and he rocks up at Ali's work and they're sort of sitting at this big office table, this desk and this meeting, and she drops a bit of paper. And he sort of picks it up for her and it's like their hands sort of touch and it's like this meat cute almost <laughs> so so late uh, david and um ali they end up having these drinks at this club and it gets a little bit steamy uh, which was a little bit bit weird to start off with and then uh you know she's sort of realizes i can't be here she gets in a cab or a car or uber or whatever it is and we have these sort of flashbacks of the moments of it with him and her in the bathroom and she's sort of rubbing her hand over her lips and her breasts thinking of him and then as soon as she walks in the door we get this shot of their family photo just <laughs> it was pretty funny um there's a montage where you know ali does some yoga and she's running and then we see her sort of uh, making bread dough with her husband and their hands are doing the bread and then we, we see them sort of get it on in the shower in the steamy shower i thought that was pretty funny <laughs> There's a scene where David holds up traffic on the road so he can talk to Ellie through the window of her car. I just don't know why we needed that. <laughs> David cracks it at Ellie at one stage um, because you know she's sort of saying, I can't be, can't be with you, I can't do anything with you. She's returned this gift, this vinyl record that he'd given her. And um, he sort of loses his temper a little bit and says, you know, who are you talking to, Deborah? And she's like, who's Deborah? And it was just so funny. I couldn't believe that the actors could keep straight faces because as an audience, we know that this is obviously his ex-wife. But it's sort of like a red herring as well because <laughs> I don't think he actually liked her anyway. So that was that was funny. Uh, Courtney, the friend, Courtney, Ellie's best friend, she throws this complete and utter hissy fit at Ellie's work over this story that David sold her about Ellie being the one that's in love with, um, <laughs> being in love with David. And, oh man, I, I just... I just can't believe that they would write a friend like this. There's no no answer of reply. There's no uh, anything to show their friendship means anything. She just believes this guy she's known for very little time and just storms out. I thought that was um, pretty ordinary. This is David, he, you know, he's a full stalker. He breaks into Ellie's house and he goes into her underwear drawer and takes a pair and smells them. I was like, come on, no, 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 no. And I'm not sure, I might have misread it, but I feel like he took a piece of her hair as well. Weird. Um, we see Ali, uh, and towards the end, she gets a text from Linda, her co-worker, saying, I need you to come into work to sign some papers. As an audience member, it is so obvious that this is David setting something up, and uh, I don't know if it was needed. And finally, uh, David, at the end of the film, we see him, he gets into the house, he's tied up um, Ali's husband and, and daughter, and he's got the record playing, the, the smashed one that he, he, he broke and he was so angry about. Apparently he's fixed it and it works. Um, weird. <laughs> <laughs> themes ideas what was this one saying uh i guess the idea of being truthful owning your mistakes if you do make mistakes like if she had told her husband what happened in the first place none of this would have happened and and you know in leading and talking about her husband that idea of reigniting that flame in their marriage too um 
by not having some ridiculous stalker follow you. You can do that in better ways by being, by being honest, being upfront. Uh, the other positive thing in this, I guess, was some good representation. We, we saw some, you know, some smart, some successful African-Americans in a majority of this film. So I enjoyed that too. Uh, what did I take away from this film? I think this was a, as I was watching the film, I was very impressed because the film is set in San Francisco and I was super impressed with how nice they made San Francisco look and I was a little bit taken aback uh, because I'm not a massive fan of San Francisco City but then afterwards to find out that this was actually filmed in and around LA it all made sense it wasn't San Francisco I thought that was funny uh, questions ponderings what am I thinking about this film so Courtney the daughter um, she had this boyfriend that we, we barely met but he was slain to death by David at the end of the film. And then we get this flashback to two months later and all of a sudden, you know, she's just happy-go-lucky to go back to college. No showing showing any impact on her, how she was feeling. Not dealt with well. Uh, the other question I had thought, like, David, apparently he's been obsessed with Ali for so long, way back in college. Why did it take him 20 years to turn full psycho on her? <laughs> just, I mean, it just doesn't make sense. It's so late. You know, she's got a kid that's in college now. He's had plenty of time to make a move. Uh, and finally, Ali, she's a lawyer. Yeah, we, we get that she's a lawyer. Surely she would have had a police officer or a cop or a friend that she could have turned to for support during this whole film. Just, you know, I don't know, just something that was missing. Um, random. All right, let's wrap this up. I can't really talk much more about this film. It's, uh, we give the film a rating out of five. For me, like, you know, there's very little to recommend about this, I guess, unless you, you want a sloppy thriller to sort of chuck on in the background without needing to focus too much. Uh, and it's not the cast's fault. They're not given an awful lot. But it, it, like this film, it just doesn't add anything new other than you know playing on those same old cliches that you see. So I'm giving this a one and a half out of five. Pretty low for me. We're on socials. We've got Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Give us a follow if you can. Give us a like or like our posts. Comment on our posts because for this episode, the post I'm going to put up or the question is, uh, would you rather live in the city or beachside based on... Um, you know, their relocation as a family from the city to the beachside. And then at the end, the final shot of this film is we say, nah, it's, we've had enough of the beach. We're going back to the city. Uh, I, uh, interesting. I like the beach. Do like the beach? And I like the city. I, I, I don't know if I could have lots of space in a place in the city, I'd like it, but I'm not a big fan of a, a cramped up little apartment, I guess. So space for me, wherever that could be. We're back next week. Next week, we have another film for you. It's from 2020. It's an animated adventure called The Lava Island Movie. This is directed by Bo Young Wook An and stars the voices of Hong Boom Ki, Kang Shi Hoon, and Eddie Lee. Interested, intrigued. I've seen the poster for this film, or this. I know it's a TV show as well, I think. So interesting to check this one out. Give it a, um, give it a, a watch, and we'll talk about that next week. As always, thanks for listening, and we'll see you then.